Hey, investor friends, I'm Michelle Markey. And as you've heard me talk about recently, I was so inspired to hear Charlie Munger's Gems of Wisdom at the 2023 Daily Journal Corporation's annual meeting. And today I've curated for you Charlie Munger's raw and super blunt thoughts on crypto. And he's letting it all out there in these clips where it's no holds bars. He's telling you straight up exactly what he thinks about crypto. And recently he even felt compelled to publish an opinion piece in the Wall Street Journal that came out on February 2nd this year. And he talked about why America should ban crypto. And he wrote that it isn't a currency, it's a gambling contract with a nearly 100% edge for the house. So based on this opinion piece from Charlie Munger, he was asked about it at the meeting and he gave even more of his thoughts. In addition to some of what he said in the past, he added even more kind of strong words for crypto that I might have to bleep some of them out because they're that strong. And it might be kind of hilarious because it's kind of funny to hear Charlie Munger curse a little bit. And that's not something we hear all that much. I mean, we hear uh, some words here and there, but he's just sort of like zero Fs given. He's just laying it all out there, what he thinks. And so I think it's super entertaining to learn from Charlie. And in addition, someone reflected on something that Charlie said previously that much like China has banned crypto already, the U.S. government should do the same. But they also asked, what else should the U.S. government or governments in general do to grow the economy? And Charlie also added some neat wisdom there about what's the best way to grow a country's economy and provide prosperity for everybody. So with those two main clips, if you enjoy learning about Charlie Munger and his thoughts on how the world should work and capitalism to benefit the most amount of people, I hope you'll like and subscribe to my video and YouTube channel because I think Charlie Munger is one of the best investors there ever was and we would all benefit as individual investors the more that we listen to someone like Charlie and we're bound to become successful if we just inherit and absorb just a small percent of everything he's ever taught so with that please like and subscribe and enjoy the following content that leads me to this question about crypto that uh, Benjamin writes in he says, in 2007 at the USC Law School, Charlie said, I'm not entitled to have an opinion on this subject unless I can state the arguments against my position better than the people who are supporting it. The question is, does this also apply to your Wall Street Journal article on banning cryptocurrencies? And if yes, would you care to share the arguments against your position? Well, I... I uh... I don't think there are good arguments against my position. I think the people that oppose my position are idiots. <laughs> and, and, and so I don't think there is a rational argument against my position. This is an incredible thing. Naturally, people like to run gambling casinos where other people lose. And the people who invented this crypto crapo, which is my name for it, and, Sometimes I call it crypto crapo, and sometimes I call it, well, crypto <laughs> And it's just ridiculous that anybody would buy this stuff. And it isn't, you can think of hardly nothing on earth that has done more good to the human race than currency, national currencies. They were absolutely required to turn man from a goddamn successful ape into modern successful humans in human civilization. Because it enabled all these convenient exchanges. So if somebody says, I'm gonna create something that sort of replaces the national currency, it's like saying I'm gonna replace the national air. You know, it's, it's asinine. It, is, it isn't even slightly stupid, it's massively stupid. And, and of course, it's very dangerous. And of course, the governments were totally wrong to permit it. And of course, I'm not proud of my country for allowing this crap, what I call the crypto <laughs> to, it's worthless, it's no good, it's crazy. It'll do nothing but harm. It's antisocial to allow it. And the guy who made the correct decision on this is the Chinese leader. The Chinese leader took one look at crypto he says, not in my China. And boom, oh, oh, 
There isn't any crypto in China. He's right and we're wrong. Well, and there is no good argument on the other side. I can't, can't supply it. So does that counter what you said back at USC? You that you shouldn't have a position unless no, you can counter? No, it doesn't counter. I, I do think you ought to be able... You ought to be able to state a lot of issues. You ought to be, how big should the social safety net be? That's a place where reasonable minds can disagree. And you should be able to state the case on the other side about as well as the case you believe in. But when you're dealing with something as awful as crypto you're, you, uh, it's just unspeakable. It's, it's an absolute horror, and, and it ha I'm ashamed of my country that so many people believe in this kind of crap and that the government allows it to exist. It is totally, absolutely crazy, stupid gambling with enormous house odds for the people on the other side, and they cheat in addition to cheating in the betting. And it's just crazy. So that is something, that there's only one correct answer for intelligent people there, you just, just totally avoid it. And avoid all the people that are promoting it. How do you feel about the gambling that took place at the Super Bowl and surrounding that and the legalized gambling taking place in this country at this point? Well, it's not as bad as crypto. I, 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 I don't think there's much harm and betting a modest amount you can afford on a supermarket bowl game, that, that strikes me as pretty, you know, particularly if you do it with a friend and not with a bookie. Um, so I, I, don't, I don't have the same feeling. I obviously don't think you should have a gambling compulsion to run around betting against odds. If you take all the money that I have bet against odds in my whole life, I don't think it's more than a few thousand dollars. Hmm. Alan Che writes in and he says, if Mr. I'm all in favor of betting with the odds. <laughs> with the odds, yeah. Alan Che writes in. Yeah, and sure. He says, if Mr. Munger thinks that Bitcoin and Ethereum are rat poison, has he ever profited by shorting them? No, I don't short. I, that isn't great. I have made three short sales in my entire life. And they're all more than 30 years ago. And, 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 and one was a currency and, and, and there were two stock trades. In the two stock trades, I, I made a big profit on one and made a big loss on the other and they canceled out. And, I, and in my currency bet, I made a million dollars, but it was a very irritating way to make a million dollars. I, I'm, I, I, I've stopped. <laughs> Not worth the headache, I guess. Well, you can laugh, but, that, but that's, that's true. It was irritating. Because you were worried? Well, because I kept asking for more margin. I kept sending over treasury notes. It was very unpleasant. I made a profit in the end, but I never wanted to do it again. Leping Wu Yang writes in, you urged the U.S. government to ban cryptocurrencies as China has done. I have a more general question. With boom and bust cycles in different countries in history, what should a good government do and not do for economic growth? Well, what you've got to do if you want growing GDP per capita, which is what everybody should want, you've got to have most of the property in private hands, so that most of the people who are making decisions about how properties to be cared for own the property in question. And that makes the whole system so efficient that GDP per capita grows in a system where you have easy exchanges due to a currency system and so on. And so That's the main way of, 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 of civilization getting rich, is having all these exchanges and having all the property in private hands. If you like violin lessons and I need your money, when we make a transaction, we're gaining on both sides. Mm -hmm. So of course GDP goes like, goes like crazy when you got a bunch of people who are spending their own money and owning their own businesses and so on. 
And, and nobody in the history of the world that I'm aware of has ever gotten from hunter-gathering to modern civilization, except through a system where, the, of where most of the property was privately owned. A lot of freedom of exchange. And, and uh, by the way, I just said something that's perfectly obvious, but it isn't really taught that way in most education. Even the, you can take a course in economics in college and not know what I just said. They, they, they don't teach it exactly the same way. Anyway. That would be your, your best suggestion. I, I love. Yeah. That, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay.